Hi there, thanks for joining me in my studio this morning. I'm kind of bundled up. It's a little chilly here in Portland, Oregon, but we're gonna be doing something really exciting, so I'm sure I'll forget all about that pretty quick. Today, we're gonna to copy the work of a master, Degas, and perfect for pastels, right? So Degas' piece, Woman Combing Her Hair, is a very famous piece by him. Now, we're gonna be copying, not forging. It's a little different, right? We're not trying to sell it. We're using it very simply for study and for our own educational purposes. So I think copying the work of masters is such a great way to go because we know going in that we, well, we have wonderful reference, number one. We've, they've, the, the masters have already figured it out for us. They've done it. So we can kind, it's a little bit easier than working from a photograph, at least for me it is. Uh, and the other thing is it's super liberating because we're not trying to, to do a piece that's somehow great. We're not trying to do a successful piece that we're going to sell or it's just for our own, our own purposes, our own enjoyment and study. So that's really, really cool. So we get to really just have fun. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. So the first thing about this piece, it's a square, which I love squares. I, Think they're a really dynamic proportion to compose in so I'm all about the square and so it's perfect for me so the one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you work with within that square I'm going to grid off my reference just in um, four quadrants to make the drawing just a little bit easier for me so I got to make sure that what the proportion on my paper is also square now today I've chosen to use a piece of color fix paper. It's the terracotta color and I love this color and I think it's going to work out really well for this particular uh, piece that I'm copying. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is uh, as I mark off my square, I'm going to have a little bit of extra space at the bottom here and I love that. I want that because that's going to be my test area. I can test my marks here. Um, on, on the bottom because I'm not going to be sure of what I'm putting up there at all. We're building relationships and so we want to do that um, before we, we put it on the actual piece. All right, so let's get started. So I'm just going to mark off my square and now that I've got that, I've totally forgotten. How big a square this is. Okay, it's 12 inches. So now I do the same here. I want to lightly, just really lightly. I don't have to go full bore. Mark off. The center. All right, so that helps me out a lot with the drawing. So I can see that right away. So her whole, um, her head and her arm here, and is all in this one quadrant. So I'm going to start out with a light, kind of a light gray new pastel and I can see that her arm I need something a little bit darker but I want you guys to be able to see it too so I think I'll just head to my trusty uh, this is uh, blue spruce okay so now I've, I could kind of put in her hair got her arm it, it that's her arm actually comes right about halfway into this quadrant and her the her armpit is is right about here so I'm gonna make sure I get that and her breast comes to about here and her her foot is actually sticking up right there. 
This is like her foot's kind of a little triangle. I want to get all crazy about all this. Her leg comes up right and meets her breast right there. And um, let's see, that's neck and head. It's kind of funny. Funny shape. And her ear is right here. Maybe a little higher. So this is her. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty good. I'm not gonna get all crazy about it, the drawing. Because if, if, if I do that, I, you know, I don't, I don't need to do that. It's something like that. Maybe your hair is a little bit lower. And then she's got her comb. a little bit hard to determine what's going on with her hand but her thumb is coming up coming underneath now I already have it a little bit wrong because her hand is over in this quadrant so I know that that's not right I'm gonna be too off if I go with that so I'm gonna go ahead and redraw that and how do I get it right? All right, so I know that all of this is, that just doesn't feel right, but I'm gonna keep going and see what happens. Um, a lot of times when I am stuck on something, it's, a lot of times it's just better to keep going and see if all the pieces will sort of fall together as, as you work. Success hides a multitude of errors. So, it's her leg. So maybe if I can get the rest of it working, I'll, I'll know what I, what I need to do to get the parts that aren't working going. It's not too bad. small little waistline. And I think I just have that maybe a little long. In her hand. That's pretty close. It's Close. I think it's close enough. Maybe it's this angle. I think it was mostly the angle. This part of her wrist, it's a little awkward. Even, you know, to me and his drawing, not saying his drawing's wrong, because I would never say that. Degas, you know, he, he actually did not, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, he was an Impressionist. He kind of didn't align himself with the Impressionists. And um, the whole plein air thing, he, he did not consider himself a plein air painter. I think he did sometimes paint in plein air, but... 
he was much more methodical and uh, careful. He, you know, every stroke to him was had had meaning and purpose, and um, he was not. I, I think I read something, but where he said he was, you know, not spontaneous. He, not, nothing about his work was spontaneous. So I think this is pretty good. There's there's a few few things here in the drawing that would be nice to have a little bit smoother, but that's okay. And here's this. So sitting here is a brush. Rounded handle, the thickness, uh, some kind of towel or drapery. Um, okay, I think that's pretty good. Okay, now, now we have to start with the pastel. <laughs> And that's not so intimidating. I've got a pretty good start here. I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of um, value. And again, you know, he was all about these the mark the marks that he made. So just so interesting to, to see how he built everything. It's a lot of subtlety to what he what he did. Cast shadow there. The lighting is, you know, fairly flat on the figure, which can can kind of be difficult because the what's in the shadow and what's in the light is not it's, it's it's not quite as obvious. It's there, just not not obviously so. Splits a little bit in shadow. And her hand. Of course, all of this is rather in shadow. It's a very beautiful reflected light on the side of her. Here, I'll make this a little bit darker. I'm on the drawing stage. You know, it, it, it's fine. Take a little bit more time. A lot of times drawing, it's not, they're not hard to do. They're just some, some kinds of drawing are just a little bit more complex. And, and with the figure, it's all about the proportions. Okay, I think we're ready to go. All right, some, oh, I'm gonna start with an overall kind of skin tone, something that not, not too dark and not too light. I also see a ton of different color in here. There's yellow, there's green, there's aqua, there's pink. But I wanna start with an overall, so I'm, I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna let the paper kind of, the texture of this paper um, drive this a little bit. The Colorfix has a particular kind of texture. 
And I'm going to let this wash kind of go into the areas that I that I put some value with the blue spruce. People often ask me, well, how do you decide on skin tone? Well, you got to start somewhere. And skin skin has a lot of color. Um, we're seeing the the blood, especially where the bone is close to the surface. It's redder. Uh, skin is translucent, so it's, it picks up a lot of reflected light. Just overall, I'm go easy over on this side because there's it's darker. I'll let that that tone that I put down do a little bit of work for me. Okay, and before I go any further than this, I'm going to start putting in the background because I the the background is essential to the figure. Uh, I think it's a mistake that we make quite a bit to wait too long to get the background in. So this is has a little bit of a light blue tone to it. It comes off. And over in here, it's kind of green. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and back there. Go ahead and get something in for that. Now as you can see I'm kind of starting in the middle, the middle value of, of um, let's see, I'm not putting in the darkest darks or the lightest lights in, in any of the areas because I, I want to sort of sneak up on those. I'm not going for the subtle things yet. I'm just going for the, the large shapes and getting the approximate values, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully sort of correct. Not not looking at nuance here. This isn't exactly right here. This is in shadow. And also, you see, I'm letting the color drift from one shape to another. Right now, you know, that's okay. I'm not trying to stay in the lines at all. In fact, probably the opposite. I'm letting color go from one shape to another so that I get a, a soft edge. There's, you can see just a little bit. Sometimes with the reproductions, you don't know whether you're, you actually are getting to see the entire image. This is a nice um, book that I have, so I think I'm getting to see that. Okay, so this is got an undertone that's kind of brownish, reddish brown, so the paper color is going to work out nicely for this shape. And I 
think I'll just go ahead and use this for this. So now we need to get our hair in. So see, it's already kind of coming together a little bit, um, which is nice. So let's get our hair. Just the overall, the approximate value at just kind of averaging it out. And I can use this for the comb. Come in and get a little bit more precise, just a little bit more precise with the con her contour of back of her head and neck. All right. Now see, this is this is better than I thought. When <laughs> I started with the drawing, I go, uh oh. What's, you know, if I, am I anywhere near close? I think it's close. It's not perfect. I just love um, seeing the beauty of his compositions, you can really feel that um, working working on this. So this is pretty close to what the um, background color that I picked. A little bit different, just a little. This little shape here, getting this, getting this fun with this little brush. Okay, I'm coming a little far on the brush. All right. Okay, before I go any further, I do want to state something about. I'm looking at this overall. I think it's pretty good. I'm, I'm not unhappy, um, but I want to make sure I remember that this part of her leg is there and in, in, in shadow. So I'm going to come in with something just a little bit darker. I'm going to come in with a little bit more skin tone. And I'm going to pick something that, that that's that sort of grayed pink. Now I'm going to start emulating his marks a bit, a bit more. He used this uh, kind of vertical strokes, and they the thing that's kind of cool about it they they do break the edges, the contour of the of the shapes. They go outside. They're they're very delicate, very very delicate.
this point, I kind of need to get some some of the lights in too. There's this beautiful kind of greenish, um, kind of gray green. Let me see if I've got something that will will do that. Something like this, I think. I think that's going to get it pretty nicely. I don't want to go overboard with the green. But it's definitely part of what's going on there. So in here. Nice vertical strokes. And they they suggest the sort of landscape or direction of the forms as well. And you could think of the body is being a landscape. It's got form shapes that are going in a particular direction, just like the landscape. Let's get it. I'm going to get out a couple more colors. I'm seeing little bits of yellow here. Um, that's, that's a little bit lighter. Then the the base color. I don't see. I'm really sneaking up on the lights because I want to be able to um, have the lights at the end. As I was reading about Degas, one of the things that's cool about copying a masterwork like this is, you know, you kind of get get involved with a study of art history that, you know, in, in a way that maybe, you you know, if you were an art student or um, that, that maybe you hadn't before, at least for me, it's, that's been the case in uh, doing, copying these masterworks. I studied Degas in, in college, actually did a independent study semester, and he was my focus, <laughs> but I still, nevertheless, um, really, you know, when you're young, I didn't really learn some of these things that I've learned through, through doing this about him. I always thought of him as an impressionist. And again, he, he did not align himself closely with them. History aligned him, but he didn't think of himself that way. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up that yellow. might be too. I want something that's got a little power. Maybe even something like that. Right here on these on these edges. There's quite a lot. Kind of back here on her back and her scapula. of right, right where the shadows meet the light is where this, this intensity of color is happening. And that's the case no matter what you're painting. If you think about looking at, out on your lawn, at the grass, if there's a, a sunny day where the shadow 
meets the light, there's this vibration, almost always, of, of color. And that's what's happening here. It's where the shadow is meeting the light. There's this, this extra bit of color. I'm getting a little bit more into her anatomy. Back, spine, all important spine. back and forth between these. He really built up the skin tone, um, sort of methodically. So this is, this mark doesn't belong. I'm gonna move over to outside of the figure, on the background a little bit just for balance sake, did these strong marks here. Doesn't look like there's very much finger blending, so I'm gonna to try to avoid doing that. Didn't, doesn't look like he did that. At least it doesn't to me. So we're just going to try to keep keep with that the same modes that he used. Uh, some of the figure does have a, a bit of an outline feel to it, um, and that's kind of interesting. Going back to the figure now, coming back up here to her shoulder. I studied figure drawing pretty intensely both in art school and after art school. Um, I worked as an illustrator for many years, so it was, you know, when you're an illustrator, you have to you have to draw the figure. Um, so. One of the things that helped me is actually I would, if I, if I needed a pose, just getting into that pose, into that position myself, helped me understand the, the, the way the body was moving, um, it was helpful. So just putting, putting your arms up, holding up the hair, your hair, if, if you're a woman, you've got long hair, if you're a man, just get to, get to pretend. Or maybe you have long hair. Shouldn't shouldn't assume. Okay, it starts to come together a little bit. You feel that muscle in her arm. For the flesh, how it's coming together right here, where where she's, and then feel the bone. I'll get this a little bit darker here. Even use the same brown. And this this kind of lovely green. A 
little bit of flesh right there. She's pretty thin, but there's this little right here indentation sacrum. Soften that just a little bit. Really sneaking up on this, and I, I think that's nice. Lots of layers. I think I'll I think I'll press a little bit harder and get through right right here. That it's a nice big area of light. And I'm sort of wanting to fill the tooth of the paper a little bit more. Just want to get a little bit more sense of overall form. There it's a little bit darker. Give it the shape of a breast. Bit of a lost and found feeling right here on her arm and the, on the edge. I think that's kind of neat. Some of it feels outlined and some of it has that more of a lost and found feeling on the edge. Let's get a little bit more up here in her ear, neck. I really like that color. It's kind of like that. Nice. Let's see if I can take something a little bit. Yeah, that's a little nicer. It's just got a little more oomph to it. A little more intensity. Right here is where. So this has a little bit of an outline feel. I don't want this to be too much of an outline right here. That's a bit much. Go ahead and press a little bit harder. This is down her spine here. It's really got the anatomy so nice. really beautiful. It's a different, little bit different color here. This is kind of a grayed lavender, uh, lavender gray. More gray than lavender. I'm kind of feeling that in here too.
I want to say that there's cross hatching in here, um, but it's interesting because it's it, it it's more more vertical lines. I, I I guess there's I guess you would say it's cross hatching. bit of blue on this underside and then I'm going to go for some, some kind of gray, lighter gray. And there's a little uh, shift in the shape of the elbow. Very, very subtle stuff. You know, when you're just looking at the, the just taking a, a a quick glance at his paintings, you, I, I don't even see those. But as working with his paintings in this way, I get to see this little subtle shifts and how masterful the drawing is. Actually, you know, really incredible. a little bit of cross hatching there that he's done. And the color subtlety is also the grays. Really, really beautiful. Kind of unexpected. Not unexpected that it's beautiful, but as I as I'm working with it, wow, okay, I wouldn't have necessarily chosen that color. I like this um brush. It's very pretty. Getting these strokes in. Just a little bit bolder. Here, um, it's not not in the figure, so maybe that's why he chose some kind of bolder. Is it different kinds of strokes? that yellow coming back over and over here too. All right, I'm gonna, now I'm going to move back to my figure. Okay, it's really always a really good idea to step back and take a look. And one of the things I noticed right away, right here um, at her waistline in the painting, one of the things that I find really beautiful is there's this little lost and found edge. And so I want that. I really want that. Um, it, it, it's, I think it's an important aspect of what's going on. So I'm going to come in with the background into the figure a little bit. And same, bring the figure into the background a little bit. When you have these sort of edges happening here and there, he doesn't have them all over the place. He, he, they're, they're, it's very strategic. Um, so, very intentional.
think this green, I got a little carried away with it. Now I think I need some lighter lights. I really want to feel the spots where the there's a turn. It's just a little tiny bit of dark right there. See the, the flesh right there is kind of um, gathered. And right here. Go ahead with something a little bit lighter. I'm not sure I want that quite so yellow. Maybe a little bit softer. So now I'm just hitting the, where the light is hitting the figure um, the strongest. These are the areas that are close to the light, facing the light. try to get go a little bit faster now because I just mostly because I I sometimes um, working a little bit faster is is a really good thing because you sometimes you get you get kind of too stuck little cast shadow right here it's very subtle the lighting is really flat um, oh and there's some there's some green in there it's really pretty pretty neat there's a couple different kinds of marks in here he's mostly using line it's it's pretty it's pretty uh this whole thing's pretty much built with it, but there's a couple different kinds of marks. Right here, and this, this cast shadow's pretty, pretty deep. I 
on this other side of her foot. Go in here too. Just back off of that a little bit. the red paper worked out. I'm not 100% happy with the red paper. It's a little strong for the subtlety of what he did. Um, it's okay. I wouldn't not recommend it, I guess. I wouldn't say don't use the red, but um, on the other hand, I think something else could work nicely too. Just a little softening here. is kind of in shadow the face the neckline it's, it's a little softening I got the ear a little bit, the placement of it just a little off. I think it should be a little bit more like that. in the camera view too much. I'm trying to lean over and get get this so you guys can see it. That's a little tricky. I'm gonna have to come back to that. Whenever I'm stuck on something, I leave it alone for a minute. And come back to it. It's always a good thing to do, I find. Here's the back of her neck. And the comb. Let's get some of her hair. So hair, you want to do sort of clusters, not, not I try to think of um, sort of plates of hair not individual um, um, strands of hair and where is the light hitting so in this case I'm kind of putting in this dark and now now I'll go back where is the where's the light hitting I need a little bit lighter brown yeah this will work nice Lights getting back 
here behind her ear. Yeah, something like that. And then so same thing here. Here's the light. The light is these sort of clusters of hair more than individual strands. time on the background. There's kind of a variety of oranges in here. It's a nice um, little bit as I get around here. I just see something that bothers me. <laughs> just want to soften that up a little bit. Subtle little reflected light. looks a little awkward in there. I think it's too complicated. A lot of times when something isn't working, it's because it's too complicated. So simplifying stuff out. Whenever I'm stuck on something, I always go back to the simp what's the simplest solution. Leave it alone until I can figure what the, out that is. Gonna kind of move a little. I'm moving a little bit faster now because what I want to do is I I I want to get some uh, some more things established. And the the faster I can do that, the the happier I am about things, right? Just such great nuance in, in what he did. It's really powerful. Really, really lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It 
the transitions and the skin tone are just so great. You really, you know, as I'm working, I really can feel her flesh and her bone and um, everything about this figure. It's really, um, it is really powerful. Get a little, have a little bit of fun with this brush, just as a little relief from the figure. It's not exactly what I want to do, but or end up with, but it's simple, and it's simpler. Not that happy with that. All right, let me just soften that edge. All right, it's gonna work on the background, and I lost, I lost that. Okay, it's a little lost and found edge right up in here. That's nice. Really um, is indicative of some movement of her hand, right? And then there's a kind of creamy yellow in there, in their background here too. I'm not trying to match him stroke for stroke necessarily as much as I'm trying to um, emulate the overall structure of his mark making. His, his marks are really, 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 really subtle. Um, so I'm not sure I can even do it um, the way he, he's done it. Uh, And like I said at the beginning, I just think that this this kind of study of of masterworks just so it's so rich because you know it's r really going to inform my work and I hope your work. Or maybe you just watch me do it. Watching people paint is pretty relaxing, isn't it? A lot more relaxing than some of the other stuff <laughs> that's out there right now. Okay. Feel the light on the on the hands and the bone. It's really, really subtle stuff. I 
getting a little cast shadow across from the sunlight outside on my easel. So this is some new pastel on here. I think that's going to work out pretty nice. There's a little kind of subtle reflected light that's a little reddish. I'm going to come in here in this little space in her spine. Do some work for me. How about this? That's too dark in there. It's all just too dark. Oop. That's not what I want. color. It's got some it's got some chroma to it too. Now the thing that's pretty in interesting and amazing about this, there isn't any part of this figure that he's left um, to, to chance, uh, that he's left out of this equation of mark making. All, he, he's, pay, he's paid attention to everything. Now that doesn't mean equal emphasis on everything. I don't think so. But there's nothing left out of the of what he's doing he in other words it's all it's it's all it's finished let's go back to that background up here Because I'm not sure I, I'm, I really even have the skills to really accomplish it in, in the way he did. Um, maybe I wouldn't be such a good forger for that reason.
left this leg out, didn't I? Just got so immersed in her back. Let's see. And get around to there. So right here is kind of her hip. There's that nice little stick that I picked out. This one. It's interesting. It feels like the, the her skin tone gets a little cooler at the extremities. some uh, like a little bit cooler gray out here even here on her thigh very subtle cast shadow right there very subtle. It's kind of nice. And let's see, I'm going to go back over here on that. Thought of another place I could use that nice kind of grade. Actually, I want something a little cooler than that. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, like so. Now, here's some outline. You know, I feel like he, here and there, there's some outline. Very selective. Very selective. Okay, and then over here, boy, just the way he handled the edges is really, really phenomenal. Okay. Okay, I think we're just about getting there. I'm going to finish up a few things. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because I'm getting to that point where I just want to be done. And that's okay. It's okay to feel like that. But when when you get to that sort of point where where um i always feel like a couple things can happen it, it can kind of fall apart um if you're not kind of mindful um because if you if you're 
if you're unclear about some things, at this point you can you can start making marks to, just to make marks. I, I don't ever want to be in that mode. I don't I don't want to be doing that. I want to be really, really intentional always with what I'm doing with the marks. If you make marks to make marks, it's it's usually not a good thing. So I want to stay you know, pretty focused. Honestly, I'm kind of fighting this red a little bit. It's I'm having to you know feel the the tooth of the paper more than I anticipated ha, need, gonna, that I would need to do. Fight fighting the red a little bit. So maybe if I had this to do over again, I'd choose something else. I want some of these transitions to be nice and soft. And that's some of the beauty of what he did. So in order to get that, it's, it's, it may take me a little more time. Feel the bone here coming out. Top of her neck. There's a bone right there. But this is not smooth. That's not right. I didn't want this to be nice. Let's see, how can I get that? Go back to my red here. And up here too. I've got some of that um, blue spruce kind of black line. It's kind of residual. I don't really want it in some places that I s still have it. I'll get some more lights. bit softer transition. I just love the subtlety. I don't want to miss that so I maybe can't rush it as much as I would like to, right? Anxious to, to see it all come together but on the other, by the same token I don't want to m miss out because I'm in a hurry. Here. So much of what he did was so, so um, focused. And, uh, you know, definitely there was no rushing. You don't feel that at all. There's no, nothing about this work that 
felt like he rushed it. Everything had great, um, great purpose. going on. To really feel where the forms meet, come together, where the bone is hitting bone next to bone. Feel the flesh. So beautiful. cooler. Got a little bit of that. There's this tiny subtle cast shadow in there too. So subtle. Got this drawing off just a tiny bit. can't see what's going on there. It's okay. I think it's just a line. Something along those lines. With the flesh tones, it's there's so much color in here. I've got I've got all kinds of color, um, all kinds of cool cool grays, warm grays, um, some red. Um, there's some green in here. Um, I'm not taking credit for any of it because none of it was my idea. Not sure about that. Let's see. I want to 
connect these shapes. Just so much subtlety in here, it's, it's, it's a little difficult to achieve. lights, pressing hard, making the easel make a little noise, a little joyful noise. There's a, lots of color, lots of different color in all these lines, the strokes. Um, it's the color is appearing throughout this skin tone. Um, it's just about the proportion: how much yellow, how much lavender, how much. Um, but it's all in there. It's amazing. And see it, uh, her. The skin tone gets uh, cooler as it goes out to her extremities here, which is really neat. Maybe there's a soft um, outdoor light, you know, streaming in here. Accounting for that. Subtle. All right, what else do I want to do? Just that. That. And do a little something here. To cover up this uh, red a little bit more. Do maybe another layer with just a kind of warm it up just a little. There's, a, there's a, this kind of more line in here, here and there, outline. Just some marks like that. Here and there. It's kind of gestural. And this is, I want this to feel like it's sitting a little bit more on this 
surface. just about there. It sure was really um, a great, great study. Really highly recommend. Just uh, any of the old masters that you really admire, just um, with the internet these days, you could just go on there and kind of have at it, They're really at your fingertips. Um, So I really, really hope you enjoyed this. I'm a little bit more color. It's just so tempting to, to just go on and on. And uh, there's, there's, like I said, there's so much subtlety in this. I could really keep playing with the nuance here for quite a while. But I'm pretty satisfied with what I've got here um, in terms of just, you know, what I gained from it. And I just... <laughs> For sure, such a such a profound appreciation for Degas, what he did, and you know what he did for pastels and what he did for just art history on the whole. Um, very very cool. Okay, so you guys have fun with this, and um, I'll see you back with another one of these. I'm planning. Lots more study of the masters. Okay, see you soon.